Hey everyone, it's your girl Carrie uh, for an unboxing video. Uh, this one's a bit different though. This is a book edition. Um, we got a bunch of great books um, from some more kind of left wing publishers that I'm really excited to get. Finally, I'm gonna be unboxing something that I like maybe know a few things about. Maybe. There's a lot of different books. I haven't read them all. Um, but let's see what we got. I'm pretty excited. Still, of course, a lot of packaging, but that's it. Um, from Margaret Kiljoy, we got A Country of Ghosts. This is a novel of utopia besieged and a tale that challenges every premise of contemporary society. So, um, try to get some fiction in there so it's not all just nonfiction. Um, we do this to we free us by Miriam Kabe. I did get to read this one. Um, it's kind of Miriam Kabe is like a really well-known uh, prison abolitionist. She's been organizing for like decades, um, and it's kind of like different blog posts, interviews, places where she's been published, um, kind of talking about her experiences doing transformative justice. What does that mean? Um, and how do we kind of resist burnout and resist having our movement um, being co-opted um, and kind of celebrate even the small wins because it's, it's hard work. Um, you know, what we're trying to accomplish is it's almost even unimaginable and we don't even necessarily, she kind of argues, we don't necessarily need to have the, um, the perfect plan like all laid out if we can just kind of whittle away at it and kind of make it up as we go like that's you know because we've been under a system of prison for so long it it's gonna take some work to kind of untangle that and so figuring out as we go do this till we free us um, highly recommend if you're interested in learning about prison abolition um this one, Lessons in Liberation, an abolitionist toolkit for educators. Um, I haven't read this one, but it sounds up my alley. And it's kind of, it has more of like a workbook vibe. So that's cool. Kind of a textbook for change, love. Um, and I guess following up on <laughs> prison abolition, I guess a big part of uh, that is like figuring out how do we do our own justice on a community level, interpersonal relationship, transformative justice is about kind of holding ourselves accountable um, and not kind of, you know, um, depending on the state to solve our problems because the state resorts to like very violent methods to do that. So how do we do, you know, uh, hold each other accountable in a way that keeps us safe um, from harm. So I haven't read this either, but this is called a Creative Interventions Toolkit, a radical guide to stop interpersonal violence, um, which also has like textbook workbook vibes. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then this, this is a kid's book. We moved together. Um, a joyful exploration of disability, community, and culture. So just helping kids kind of understand um, how different people move in the world and how to be accepting of that and caring. Um, so that's some, you know, wholesome content right there. Um, Revolution Today by Susan Buck Morris. I'm not familiar with her, but um, I just like anything that has the revolution in the title. Uh, <laughs> same with um, Why Don't the Poor Rise Up? Organizing the 21st Century Resistance. I also haven't read this one, but it sounds rad. A People's Guide to Capitalism. I haven't read this either, but I do think capitalism has become kind of like this word that you're not allowed to say. 
And I don't think people really understand it. They're just like, capitalism is the economy. But actually, it's only one way of organizing the economy. And arguably, it's a, and it's based on, of course, land privatization and the exploitation of labor to create profit, which I personally don't think is a good way to structure our society. And I do have an economics degree, so I'd be happy to talk about this more. Um, Angela Davis, her new autobiography just came out this month. Very cool. Um, I feel like Angela Davis needs no introduction. Uh, she's been a prison abolitionist for like 50 years. She um, was on the run from the, she was imprisoned and uh, got herself out, which is cool. Um, and yeah, she's, I think, just absolutely brilliant. I did get to read uh, <sighs> Women, Race, and Class, I think it's one of her first books. Um, it's, it's very communist. She actually did run for the Communist Party leadership and did not win, and I think that's a shame, but I didn't vote. Um, <laughs> Ooh, the ballot, the streets, or both. Um, I'm excited about this one. This um, from Marx and Engels to Lenin and the October Revolution. Um, focuses on Lenin's approach to electoral politics um, and their own writing to be a central feature of the revolutionary strategy. So, this is some. I'm excited to read this one. Uh, I think whether the left should engage in electoral politics is something that like I'm thinking about a lot because. Right now, especially at the provincial level, like we don't have a lot of parties that I think really represent my values. Um, we don't have any parties that are really willing to talk about capitalism. And, um, but I do think that elections are a good time to talk about politics. I had a lot of fun canvassing in the last municipal election. Um, and municipal elections are, are great because, yeah, you don't need a political party. So I was able to really volunteer for candidates who I believed in, who had created their own kind of um, campaigns that I supported. Um, and, and a lot of it was really community driven, the discourse. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read this one. Should we engage in electoral politics? The questions of our day. Revolutionary rehearsals in the neoliberal age. This is edited by Colin Barker, Gareth Dale, and Neil Davidson. Um, this one actually is, um, where did I think someone else? I guess it's a collection of different writers. Um, and I guess giving us a better sense, it's like more kind of international in scopes. Um, so we can kind of see how other places are resisting capitalism. It is something my book club is going to be reading. So we got copies. Uh, we also pirate PDFs online. But if, you, if you're like, I need the book and you want to join my weekly book club, I'm happy to send you the details. The Sapanas. Dignified Rage, Final Public Speeches of Subcommander sub Marcos. Um, I'm really interested to learn more about the Zapata, Zapatistas, sorry. Uh, Zapatas is a restaurant that is inspired by the Zapatistas here in St. John's. Um, the Zapatistas are based in Mexico. They are organized kind of in an anarchist, non-hierarchical model that I think is like really interesting and they like did go to war like the Mexican state tried to like invade their autonomous territory and they resisted and I think they won I don't know much about it but I think they did successfully resist and they are still operating autonomously um they did of course resort to violence which I think is like why people on the left you know don't talk about them very much I don't know I don't know I, I need to learn more about the Zapatistas. Um, I just know like little bits that make me really interested to learn more. So if you also want to learn more, here's a book. <laughs> socialism from Below. What is Socialism? Classic text by Hal Draper on the case that genuine liberation can only come from the self-activity of workers and, and ordinary people. Um, so I have a few books about kind of, yeah, how do we deconstruct these words that I think get thrown around a lot, but 
um, there's so much propaganda of, and like about like what the words mean. I don't know if people necessarily always understand them. Um, so here's a text if you're like, I want to learn more about socialism, what that is. Here you go. I'm not to say like people don't necessarily understand them, I just think that there's a lot of misinformation being shared. Even myself, I call myself an anarchist, but when you really look at like what is the difference between anarchy and communism, they are very similar. I guess it's just like the methods of how you get there are different. Um, just as an example. But like anarchy, I think is one of those words that always gets associated with chaos. Um, when, yeah, I think that's propaganda. Anyway, on to the second box. Okay, I'm like so excited to get this book. I read this in book club <laughs> over the winter and honestly it changed my world. Um, it's called Pleasure Activism, The Politics of Feeling Good. Um, so it is, it's a collection of different essays. A lot of them are by Adrienne Marie Brown, but not all of them. Um, or some of them she's like interviewing different people. Um, and so it just talks about like, she argues that to build kind of a revolutionary consciousness within the community to really encourage people to rise up, we need to push the message that like people do deserve better. Um, there's totally this idea under capitalism that, you know, humans are like made to struggle and you know, you can't really expect anything else. Life is hard and that's all you get. And um, I think, and, and Adrian is really trying to drive home the message that like, we do deserve pleasure and happiness and joy. And we can find that in community by building really strong friendships and trust. And especially like when you're involved in your community as an activist, like you're, you get the um, pleasure of just like meeting so many wonderful people. And we should be so grateful that they like come into our lives. I'm getting a little bit emotional because I am so grateful for my community and the people that I've met through organizing. I think um, I'm always trying to think like, why is it that people get involved in this stuff? Um, but I, yeah, I'm really lucky for the people that I've gotten to meet and the friendships that I have built. Um, so yeah, it's about like appreciating those friendships, appreciating, taking time for yourself, like radical kind of self care. Like she talks a lot about sex, to be honest, <laughs> the importance of just like sex, your mood and your well being, and you know, don't, but like good consensual, you know, uh, trusting, communicative sex. Um, but there's also stuff about like burlesque and fashion and food and yeah friendship so highly highly recommend this book truly changed my life um just made me sign up for bumble because i'm so single i shouldn't say that um what else do we have this one i'm interested in it's also by the same author but it's a fiction um a novella of Afrofuturism and true life world building. Grievers cannot be more timely tackling loss, plague, gentrification, memory, and grief with a path towards hope in a future Detroit. So yeah, again, some fiction to mix it up. Ooh, this is a little book. Look, it's so little. This one is called Disorder, a political fable. Um, Brilliant and hilarious. Imagines a series of crimes. Ooh, fun. Um, so that's a little fiction. Mix it up. This also is by Adrian B. Brown. Prolific. Called Holding Change, the Way of Emergent Strategy, Facilitation, and Mediation. Um, so we know that facilitation is really key for transformative justice so that we can create spaces where we can talk about the violence and harm that's being done in our community in a way that like people feel safe and comfortable doing. Um, but also as an organizer and a, trying to hold meetings like facilitation, good facilitation is so key to a good meeting. Um, so I'm curious to, yeah, read more about this. Um, how 
How We Get Free by Black Feminism and the Kambahi River Collective. Um, the Kambahi River Collective were very cool, like, radical black feminists from, like, the 60s, 70s who were talking about racism in the white, in the women's movement, but also about sexism in the civil rights movement and trying to find out, like, how do we have, like, an anti-racist liberation movement. Um, so very cool. Um, this is edited by Kianga Yamahata Taylor, who's brilliant. So really great history. I'm actually reading this bridge called My Back, which is written in the 80s with some of these authors like Barbara Smith and Beverly Smith, I think are both in it. Um, so they're from the Kambahi River Collective. And just like really brilliant. It's cool to read, to kind of look back and reflect on kind of like where kind of those liberation movements were and like how did we get to the point where we are now like it felt like things were really progressing but it feels like now we've kind of stepped back from where things were um I think arguably because a lot of the movements were co-opted by capitalism and the idea that like we can achieve equality under capitalism um you know we have a black woman billionaire so that's equality it's like but if some people are billionaires that means like you know billions of other people are in poverty so is that equality like just because we have this representation on the top doesn't mean that things are better for people on the bottom so i don't know if that's what this talks about but that's what's, that's what's coming up in the book so i i imagine there's similar themes um yeah Turn the world inside out, the emergence of nurturance culture. So I think this kind of follows up with like pleasure activism and just like um, the importance of care in the movement, which I think often gets kind of sidelined, but it's, I think it's really having a moment right now. I think now that I would say more like women or non-binary and trans people are kind of taking the lead and talking more about care and not letting it be trivialized and um, not letting people feel like that's silly. Like, you know, we have to be logical, rational, um, and have these political aims. And so there's definitely, I think a movement now to kind of say like, we're all not doing well. <laughs> like this is a sick society and it's making us sick uh, physically and mentally. And so how do we take care of each other um, and, and taking care of each other as an act of resistance, uh, I think it's really powerful. So I got a few books that kind of talk about that. So this is one. Ooh. I'm excited about this one too. The Black Panthers Speak. Um, so this is, I guess, different essays from different Black Panthers. Um, Fred Hampton, Bobby Seale, Huey P. Newton um and some history i i did get to read i've read some stuff by the black panthers they were super cool i think they've been i think they're starting to like get obviously there was a lot of propaganda against them and they were you know kind of presented as like very violent and um aggressive and they were like militant um but you know they also did things like a free school a free breakfast program, a free lunch program for uh, kids in their community, which the U.S. Um, realized was a great idea. I guess realized that if they didn't do that, you know, I guess they tried to undermine the power of community groups by doing it themselves because they knew that it was something that was needed um, and they didn't want community groups to um, have the power. The government must have all the power. So yeah, um, a lot of these people, of course, were um, murdered by the police or imprisoned by the state. Um, so this is a really cool collection. The Black Panthers were cool too. If you wanted to like actually join the movement, they had this like book list that you had to read, uh, which I, I as obviously I like to read. And I do think like you can talk to people about issues and try to explain your perspective and why you think the way you do. But I do also think that people need to do self-transformational work and I think reading is part of that and I think reading in a group makes that a lot easier so again book club 
Or start your own book club. We got a lot of books. So yes, I also got Marx's Capital Illustrated. I have not read Capital. Um, it's quite dense. So I thought maybe this could be a fun way. I imagine I'm not the only one who hasn't read Capital. Um, this would be a fun way to read it and try to um, explain Marx's theory, which is actually um, really like grounding theory in a lot of like economic texts, but we don't talk about Marx in the economics that is taught at Memorial University because he is a rad revolutionary um, and capitalism does not like it. <laughs> Another Angela Davis book. Freedom is a constant struggle. Ferguson, Palestine, and the foundation of and the foundations of a movement. Um, so this is cool. Another amazing Angela Davis book came out. I want to say twenty sixteen. I feel like it came out before Black Lives Matter. Um, yeah, twenty sixteen. Look at that. Uh, um, but I guess it was like obviously Ferguson. I guess built up to that Black Lives Matter summer that we saw um, in 2020 and kind of connecting how capitalism, land privatization, and exploitation of labor is, I guess, a global structure and how is the struggle here related to the struggle elsewhere. <gasps> Oops, someone's here. And we're back. Um, we're almost done. What else? Ooh, Black Skin, White Max by Franz Fanon. Franz Fanon was a early kind of Marxist theorist from like the 40s, 50s. Um, he died in 61, at kind of a young age. He was, he was only like 36, um, but like truly brilliant. Um, I haven't read his work, but it gets referenced like so much that like I very much need to. Um, I did read Red Skin White Mass by Glenn Clopard, um, which is about, which is, you know, uh, inspired by Franz Fanon, Fanon, but um, more about kind of the experience of Indigenous people in Canada. I think he's a Dene man. Um, and I guess, I guess from what I understand, it's about kind of co-optation by the state, as I talked about earlier, like, it's, um, you know, as Audre Lorde said, you cannot use the master's tools to take down the master's house. Um, when the government is trying and the state is trying to kind of uh, co-opt your movement and say like, you know, I guess like in Red Skin, White Mass, he talks about the use of the Supreme Court to um, show like have recognition of indigenous land in Canada and he's kind of saying like you know the state created the supreme court so if we kind of go through that method we're not really going to get the self recognition self determination um freedom from the state that is kind of what the what we what is needed obviously some places have gone the route with mixed results uh, and some places are just kind of taken into their own hands. So anyway, I don't know much about it, but um, I haven't read this book. But it's a classic text that I, I am looking forward to reading. I keep putting it on book club list, but more contemporary books keep getting picked about, like one day. He also did The Wretched of the Earth, which talks, I think, from what I understand, more about uh, imperialism, global kind of colonialism. I really want to read that one too. All right, Beyond Survival, Strategies and Stories from the Transformative Justice Movement. Um, so I haven't read this one either, but sounds cool having us kind of imagine what does transformative justice look like in our community. This one, The Abolition of Prison is a little one. Uh, I think the, the title is very clear. I haven't read this one either, but... Um, good maybe starter text if you are wondering about prison abolition. Abolition Feminism Now. So this is a pretty recent book that Angela Davis did with some other folks. Um, I feel like it just came out maybe last year. Um, I'm not gonna be able to find. Oh, it just came out this year. 
fresh off the press. Um, I guess it's kind of self-explanatory. Um, abolition, feminism, now. Let's do it. Um, what's next? Ooh, All Our Relations by Winona LaDuke. I haven't read this, but I did get to see Winona LaDuke at a Haymarket um, webinar, and she, I just thought she was like absolutely brilliant. And she speaks truly just from the heart with passion. She's not one of these like academics who is, you know, uh, you know, very careful with their words and and use kind of words that we don't always know. And um, had like kind of a presentation point like they were just kind of speaking from the heart um very community based very grassroots vibes um so i yeah i'm curious to read this um oh it talked about the inu filled with inspiring testimonies of struggles for survival cool and there's labrador or i guess quebec natasinan <laughs> representation okay I think that's the end all right thanks everyone for joining me I feel like there are supposed to be more books couple more books um this one intersectional class struggle i haven't read this one but i feel like it's pretty self-explanatory theory and practice i got i got one noam chomsky book i haven't like read any noam chomsky but i don't and i feel like i hear mixed reviews but um this one's called optimism over despair on capitalism, empire, and social change. Um, so the the title definitely stood out to me as kind of talking about one thing that like pleasure activism they talk about is like the importance of I don't know we don't want to make our movement about uh, how horrible everything is and so everything is awful so you have to get involved because that it's really easy to kind of just like tune out of that. So how do we have hope and joy and optimism in our movement and get people excited that way rather than being like everything is miserable we have to do something it's like everything could be greater let's do something i am definitely missing at least one book so maybe there'll be a part two but that's everything for now um thank you all for tuning in it was lovely um have a great day and we'll talk to you later a and um if you want to talk about any of the issues discussed today hit me up i love to talk but also you should read and we can talk about what you read cool all right bye